Welcome to the laboratory submission of subsistence training video created by Warrant Officer 1 Alexander. This training video is about the basics and tips of preparing a food sample for laboratory submission in accordance with the listed documents. Here are a list of things that you may or may not need in order to submit your samples. For example, the FedEx request form or the chain of custody, depending on the reason for submission. Here are a few examples of samples you may submit to the lab. In addition to frozen, chilled, and dry food items, you may also send swabs from the processing area in your commissary. According to Medcom Regulation 40-28, the Lab Sample Submission Database is the primary means of completing DA Form 7539. However, if the database is down, you can use the PDF file that you can search online and input the report later. For soldiers that hasn't had a chance to input a new lab sample in the database, this is the way to go. Go to the application portal, click Lab, then choose Lab Submission and Sample Management. Once there, click New Lab Submission. Once you click the New Lab Submission tab, the window will show up to input your information and the product information. This is mostly self-explanatory, however, Block 5, producer or manufacturer, is very important and you must pay close attention. This will be discussed later. In order to make unnecessary mistakes, you need to follow the block-by-block -block instruction of the Lab Sample Submission Guide or Midcom PM 40-13 to fill out the DA Form 7539. Special note in Block 2 of the DA Form 7539, the point of contact. Write or enter the name of the person who is sending the samples and have the knowledge of the product, not your branch in CUIC or warrants. If you are sending the product, then your name and phone number is entered in this block. As mentioned in a previous comment, Block 5 of the A Form 7539 is very important when sending samples to the lab. This is because when the result of the samples do not meet the standard, the lab can trace the product back to the producer. Here is an example of the product that PFC Puentes is showing us. The product's brand name is Fresh Express with product code circled above. PFC Puentes determined that the bag salad requires coming from an approved source and will be listed in PSC Circular 40-1. He then searched the database to find the exact producer based on the brand name and product's point of origin code and found the match. The information then entered into the database or printed form of the A Form 7539 in Block 5, including the VC or PHC number in the appropriate block. There are varieties on how companies label their product. Mostly products are marked with distributed by instead of manufactured by. It is the submitter's job to decipher where the product comes from. Also important note to remember in Block 5, producer or manufacturer, is the aesthetic sampling of food from bulk container to a smaller container. If the facility has 5 pounds of potato salad and the lab requires only 8 ounces, your facility will aseptically take 8 ounces or more potato salad into a smaller container. In this case, instead of using the original producer, you will enter the facility's name and address in block 5 because the facility personnel is the last person who handled the food. If you are sending multiple samples but the product came from the same producer or manufacturer, you will only need to submit one DA Form 7539. List all the items in page 2 of the DA form and continue with different sample number. Filling out page 2 of the DA form 7539 is also important. You must read the lab sample submission guide to determine how much samples you need to send. In this example, the lab need at least 8 ounces. The facility only have 6 ounces per bag. In order to meet the requirement, you need to pull 2 bags, which equals to 12 ounces. When pulling two bags to meet the requirement, you must ensure that the product code matched in order to be acceptable and can be tested in the lab. Another important note to remember when filling out page 2 of the DA form 7539 is the product code. Make sure to enter the use by or expiration date, any lot number, and other lot code information exactly as it appears on the product label or container. For sample weight or volume, enter the weight or volume of one item as it appears on the product label or package. For quantity submitted, enter the number of individual items submitted as one sample. For the example we use, we will enter two since we have two bags as one sample. Tips to remember when entering page two of the web version of the day form 7539 and the lab sample database is not working, make sure to check the compatibility view setting and try it again. Here are some general guidelines for submitting samples. 
chilled shipments must contain one temperature pilot sample per shipping container. The purpose of the pilot sample is to determine the temperature of your sample when it arrived in the lab. When the temperature of your pilot sample is not in accordance with the lab requirement, your sample may not be tested. Do not count the pilot as your sample. A pilot should be similar in type to the sample being submitted and label the pilot sample as pilot. Pack samples carefully to prevent damage. Individual samples should be placed in a separate plastic zipper bags. This is to prevent leaking from the inside out and outside in. When sending frozen samples, you can only use dry ice. Different units have different requirements to acquire dry ice. In some cases, you may have to submit a purchase request through your unit or it could be as simple as going through your base hospital. When sending frozen food with dry ice, make sure you label your box with dry ice warning label and ensure you have enough dry ice to keep your frozen food frozen and the dry ice is not in direct contact with the samples. When using wet ice instead of ice packs, double bag the wet ice to prevent from leaking and contaminating your samples. Some food items require you not to tape the top or the lid. If you are taping the sample container to prevent from leaking, do not use too much tape which will be hard for the lab to open. If you're using too much tape and the lab had to use a knife or a scissor, chances are your food will be contaminated and will not be tested. There are products such as kimchi or ice cream that requires a specific quantity, although it made the 8 ounce minimum requirements per container, but still have to submit more than one container. You have to read the lab sample submission guide to be sure you are sending the right amount. Ship perishable item in an insulated container with refrigerant. When using ice packs, make sure to use frozen ice packs instead of chilled ice packs. You also need to make sure that chilled samples are pre-chilled in order to arrive at the lab with required temperature. When shipping heavy or bulky items, pack them carefully. Use extra packing material to prevent product from shifting and damaging the samples during transit. Place a copy of your DA Form 7539 in the zipper bag and attach it in the lid of the container. Ship in several boxes instead of one heavy box. Page 3 of the Lab Sample Submission Guide has recommended refrigerant ratios to determine how much refrigerant to use to maintain the correct temperature during transit. Ship perceivable samples by overnight or next day delivery using FedEx or other means. Whenever possible, do not ship chilled or frozen samples on a Thursday for Friday delivery, unless directed by the lab. Make sure to notify the laboratory whenever a shipment is made and change your DA Form 7539 from No to Yes in the remarks section of samples submitted to the lab for testing. There are common mistakes that submitters make which resulted for product not being tested. For example, incorrect producer or incorrect plant number. As mentioned previously, block 5 is very important and it is the submitter's job to ensure it is correct. Another common mistake is sending chilled sample with no pilot sample. In order for the lab to test the samples, we have to make sure that samples arrived in a testable condition, including the correct temperature. If you are sending more than two products for one sample, ensure that they have the same product code. The lab will not test the product if there is not enough samples to test. Another common mistake is not labeling and separating your samples in an individual Ziploc bags to prevent contamination. Samples must be packed and labeled according to your sample number in the A form 7539. When tasked to send pet foods or pet trays during destination monitoring program, do not send pet food in plastic container or canned items. If chilled pet foods are not available, send dry pet foods packed in bags. In order to not waste any resources, send your food samples the right way. Call the lab for guidance and any questions you may have. They are more than happy to help you. I hope you learned something from this instructional video and thank you for watching. Miss Alexander out.